Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be among such distinguished guests. Uh, let me provide with seven key words that will take over my, most of my speech. Uh, the first is uh, energy and the role of renewables. The second is energy saving. The third is liberalization of energy markets. The fourth is energy poverty. The fifth is diversification of energy resources. And two additional issues at the end, exploration of hydrocarbons in Eastern Mediterranean and the issue of the Greek islands. I'll, I, I provided these seven key words because five of them, the first five, I think, uh, that we are more or less obliged to follow a specific pattern concerning a huge transformation that is going on and will continue to go on until 2030, both in our energy production and in our energy consumption. And uh, I underline this fact because uh, more or less we are bound to follow our commitments to both the Paris Agreement and the EU policy concerning the targets to be set within the next months for uh, 2030, which refer to two very specific targets. The first has to do with uh, the role of renewable energy in our energy production. The target will be set at a very high level. Uh, most likely we'll have to have 27% of our energy consumption uh, to be produced by renewables. And at the same time, this implies that renewables energy uh, has to participate something in the range of 40 to 50 percent in our energy mix. And the second pillar is the target of having to consume something in the range of 30 percent less energy uh, than we do today. So we have two very high targets uh, to be set at the European level and uh, the role of each and every country is to produce a national plan within 2018 on how to attain those very high, very high targets, specific measures that have to be taken into consideration in order to attain uh, those targets. This raises a number of issues that uh, um, for our country, Greece, uh, we are uh, doing very well on the first pillar of this uh, process in terms of the penetration of renewable energy. Greece produces today 29% of its energy through renewables. We are planning to set the target to 50% for 2030. We are not doing very well on the second pillar on energy saving. And uh, there, there is uh, the focus on uh, how to proceed with very ambitious programs and uh, targets. Uh, that's an open issue that uh, uh, will be identified within our national plan uh, that uh, practically started a few weeks ago, the National Committee on that is supposed to uh, draw this plan and will be completed through uh, public consultation and two successive discussions in the Greek Parliament within the next six months. The third issue, the liberalization of the markets, is a key one. Uh, we have made a number of major reforms and uh, I think that uh, the liberalization of the markets is a major issue in this transformation. I will name a few of them. 
uh, which are absolutely crucial. The first has to do with uh, renewables ener uh, renewable uh, energy itself. Until now, we, you were using uh, the tariff system, the feed-in system that guaranteed the prices of energy produced by renewables. This system is over. Since last March 2017, that is, we had the last group of licenses provided to renewable energy with uh, guaranteed prices. Since last March, we moved to a system where there will be a tender process uh, annually, two or three times annually. Uh, all uh, producers will know the rules of the game. And uh, this is a first major step, and prices will be determined uh, through this tender process. So more or less, we are moving to a new system where new rounds of investments uh, will be aware uh, of what demand for renewables will be in the next one, two or three years and how the process uh, of this tender will go on. The second element of liberalization is uh, the disinvestment, divestment of the lignite market. As you know, PPC had a monopoly on uh, lignite in Greece. Lignite will remain at the most possible rate part of our energy mix because it's, uh, it has a huge economic and social impact in the Greek economy. Lignit used to be 80% of our energy production. Nowadays, it's less than 30. And uh, most likely in the 2030 plan, it will remain a major part, something in the range of 20% of our energy production. Now, the opening up of the lignite market through the, the divestment of 40% of lignite production of PPC implies that uh, one of the monopolies that existed will be removed and uh, there will be at least two or three players in the lignite production in Greece. The third element of liberalization of the market is the gas market. The uh, wholesale market in gas was uh, liberalized a couple of years ago, from January the 1st, 2018. We liberalized the wholesale market, the retail market, sorry. Uh, and uh, already we have uh, a number of companies that uh, started entering the market. And at the same time, the liberalization of the gas market implies, among other things, that uh, combined services, energy services, will be provided with uh, the retail market of both gas and electricity uh, being under way of huge transformation as combined uh, products and services will be provided. And the final element and the most important probably of all, concerning the changing of the market structure of the energy sector, is the target model itself. We are on a track to introduce the target model. The background work has been going on quite successfully. It includes, among other things, the establishment of the energy exchange market. And uh, the full implementation of the target model, according to the last uh, presentation and to the timetable more or less uh, discussed and agreed, uh, will be implemented, uh, will be in place uh, probably by the end of this year, the start of next year. So, uh, taking into account uh, these uh, major changes in the markets, obviously this will attract a, a new round of investment, and at the same time it will provide a, a, a huge momentum in this major transformation. Taking into account those considerations, a major task, number four, is energy poverty. 
we are all aware in Europe uh, the, during the last decade energy prices went up uh, now there is a huge effort stabilizing the energy market at the same time uh, making certain that uh, the energy markets and the prices will be much more competitive than in the past but at the same time a major target uh, has been the uh, response to a phenomenon which we have to tackle which is energy poverty that is uh, a significant percentage of the population being unable uh, to, to get all the, uh, the energy services required. Energy poverty is a major task for us and a major issue. We have introduced extensive legislation on this subject. Practically we are um, uh, covering through uh, the welfare pricing of electricity for uh, a significant part of our population, those that are below the poverty line, they get a 70% energy bill discount according to our latest uh, legislation. This refers practically to uh, 300,000 uh, households. And uh, for a second group, a second layer of uh, those that are uh, around the poverty line, there is uh, special measures and discounts at the range of 30%. But uh, besides this, uh, the major issue is that during this transformation, uh, practically we have to incorporate all the new instruments that will guarantee uh, that uh, every citizen will have access to energy. The fifth and final target, which remains within uh, the European framework of uh, targets, policies, and how the whole uh, system will change, has to do with the diversification of our energy resources. This focus among various things to a major risk, which is the gas, which is gas. Uh, Gas will be a transition uh, source of energy. It's absolutely crucial because the expansion of renewables requires uh, stabilization uh, and within this respect ha gas has been absolutely crucial. It will continue to increase its consumption. In Greece we had impressive rates of increase of gas consumption. Uh, something in the range of 10 to 20 percent annually and uh, within this respect the diversification of resources is absolutely crucial. We have uh, major uh, projects uh, that uh, are being uh, in progress. To name the most important is TAP that will bring Azeri gas to Europe. Um, Greece has become a hub uh, of gas. Um, TAP will provide also northern Greece uh, and the use of gas in a whole number of uh, towns and cities in northern Greece. And at the same time, we have major projects as uh, the vertical corridor, that is IGB that goes hand in hand with uh, the LNG uh, FSRU in Alexandropolis. The completion uh, of Revithusa uh, in Attiki, which uh, practically uh, is adequate to provide, to cover all the needs of the Greek market for uh, the years ahead. Uh, so LNG will diversify the resources and at the same time uh, the pipelines being built and those that are planned will uh, diversify our resources. Now I go to the two final issues, uh, hydrocarbon and uh, the Greek islands. Hydrocarbon uh, Eastern Mediterranean has become a new center as a production point of hydrocarbons. Uh, Israel, Cyprus, uh, Egypt, uh, recently Greece has been added in the list. 
we have completed uh, a number of agreements. Uh, last week we had four major agreements going through Parliament. We had uh, another two before. Uh, hydrocarbon has become extremely important. It has gained a strategic momentum, uh, mainly because uh, the potential that exists, uh, this potential has increased lately with two additional areas. The one has to do with the Ionian Islands, uh, west of Corfu, where major international players, Total and others, are participating. And uh, the new tender process that is completed tomorrow, Monday, uh, that has to do with southwestern of Crete. Uh, the standard process was initiated by ExxonMobil. There is uh, an open tender process to be completed now, and a very ambitious plan that uh, uh, the potential there uh, may be extremely important. Practically, the hydrocarbon changes uh, a lot of uh, the area, the broader area, because it opens up the space if production is to be there and has such a huge potential in Eastern Mediterranean. Then additional projects like the East Med pipeline and other projects uh, are, have been in the picture and uh, we participate uh, in these projects uh, for the last couple of years. And the final issue is uh, the Greek islands. Um, we have two major initiatives. The basic idea is straightforward. We will have interconnections with the Greek islands and the, uh, the Greek islands and, main, and uh, mainland Greece. That uh, means a huge investment in Greece. The first was completed, and that has to do with Kiklades, and we hope next month uh, to start operating. There are two major projects that refer to my home area, Crete. Um, well, I'm looking forward to fulfill, to go on with this project, if I stand the chance to be re-elected there. Um, so, um, uh, plus the interconnections, the grid interconnections, which uh, are absolutely crucial for the establishment of both regional markets in the Balkans and Eastern Mediterranean, plus the additional uh, initiative, which is uh, last but not least. We have too many islands. Some of them will not be part of the grid. Um, Therefore, we have initiated, together with the European Commission, a new initiative that works on the idea that the not interconnected islands uh, will be able uh, to gain uh, by producing their own, own energy, 100% renewables, and uh, being able to participate in the new technologies that uh, will uh, allow such islands to become fully autonomous and dependent on clean energy. I think this is the framework we have been working on. I would like to thank you.